everyone, and Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple today released a bunch of important security updates across the board today, ahead of the iPhone 15 launch and the public release of macOS Sonoma on Tuesday. And we're gonna go over all the things that you're gonna need to know about the Ventura 13.6 update, along with a preview of macOS Sonoma and OpenCore Legacy Patcher. We're gonna show you a live demo of installing it on a M1 MacBook Air, and we're gonna go over OpenCore on a non-metal and a metal Mac. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Friday, September 22nd is a big day for iPhone users because the iPhone 15 is out. And one of the most interesting thing today is that with all the updates, we got a very specific update for just iPhone 15 users, which is iOS 17.0.2. iPhone 14 and lower will get 17.0.1 and the same thing with iPad OS 17.01. And if you're running iOS 16, you got 16.7 for iOS and iPad OS. There was no no HomePod update, there was no tvOS update, but if you're running watchOS on the latest version, there was a 10.0.1, and for watchOS 9, you got 9.6.3. Now on the macOS side, for Monterey, we got 12.7, and there was no associated macOS Big Sur update. macOS Big Sur is most likely dead on arrival and no longer supported, so it's going to be Sonoma, Ventura, and macOS Monterey. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and we can see that the macOS Ventura 13 13.6 update is in software update. We can click on more info if you wanted to get more information about that and is recommended for all users and the size is showing up as one gigabyte because we are on 13.5.2. This size will get larger the farther operating system back go. Like let's say you're on 13.4, it could be 2.5 gigabytes. And if you're on Intel, the size is also going to be different. Now, if you're running Open Core Legacy Patcher with an unsupported Mac, you're always going to see it as 11 gigabytes in size. That is normal. So don't worry about that when you see that. Now all you need to do is click on install now, click agree, and we'll type in our password. And there we go for the download. We're going to let this finish downloading. Okay, we jump to the preparation phase. It usually jumps right up to 30 minutes, but goes a lot quicker. So we're going to keep an eye on how long it takes to install. We're going to let it reboot and install the update, and we'll be right back after the update finishes. Okay, the update is complete. We are on macOS 13.6 and the build version is 22G120. Now this is important because there was multiple versions of the 13.6 in beta. There was three exactly. So if you were testing the beta and you wanna get on the public release, make sure you turn off the beta track so you see the public version of 13.6 so you can install it. How long did it take to install the 13.6 update? Well, it took four minutes for the preparing part of the update and for the installing after reboot it took four minutes this mac also has file vault encryption enabled just so you know for a reference standpoint and the total install time was eight minutes and if you look at the previous updates right on target but this is interesting because if you look back at the larger updates like 13.5 and 13.4 it took a lot more time to install because there was a lot of different bug fixes and feature improvements now when you look at the security updates like 13.51 and 13.52 only eight minutes right on target and this is exactly where 13.6 was so that's why we're looking at just security updates only here how much space did the 13.6 update take on the macOS installation? We have 13.78 on the 13.5.2 and 13.83 on the 13.6 update so not very big of a change now let's talk about Safari. Safari was not updated in the 13.6 update, but it was updated to 16.6.1 in macOS Monterey and macOS Big Sur as a standalone update and software update. So if you see that, you will see that alongside the previous updates if you didn't install them for 12.7 and 11.7.10. Now let's talk about the Apple Silicon M1 M2 system firmware. It was not updated in 13.6. And if you look at the previous releases, it has not been updated since 13.5. So the last previous three releases, same firmware version. And that's the same for the OS loader version. That is the same here for the previous three releases. Now, when we talk about the T2 bridge updates, we would think that that was the same, but it was actually updated for T2 Intel Macs to 2116-365-00. And you can and tell that we've got a number change here from the 20s so that's getting prepared for Mac was Sonoma right there Apple did release a full installer of 13.6 so you can build a USB installer or do a fresh install. They also released a M1 Apple Silicon Apple configurator to restore file for 13.6 along with a Sonoma 14.0 RC2. 
Now let's talk about what's new in the 13.6 update. And we always come to this site to see what's going on. And as you can tell, Mac OS Ventura is winding down on feature releases. We're no longer going to see any new features in Ventura. It's all going to go to Sonoma. And we may see a bug fix or two, but we'll see that in here. And we can always tell by looking at the, if Apple doesn't list the exact bug fix, they will put in here important bug fixes. So you can see this is security related only. I always just double check to make sure there wasn't anything new for Enterprise Inventor, and there's not since 13.5. And again, this may be the final update we see any changes for Mac OS Ventura and Enterprise feature changes or improvements. Now we can talk about all the security updates that we talked about earlier. And one of the important things that we have to look at here is the security update page. And when we click on here, this time, instead of there only being one vulnerability for Mac OS 13.5.2, we've got two. We've got security and kernel. This is also the same security research firm, the Citizen Lab, as was reported in the 13.5.2 update. So I don't know if this is related to that or exactly like that, but we do now have a Center for Internet Security Advisory that was just put out today and it is 2023-108 and you can see that they talk about the issue here and all the CVEs that were included in this release and all the operating systems that are affected by this and they say basically the risk factor if you're large and medium government high and if you're large and medium business high and they talk about the technical summary of the issue that the way this is implemented is if it processes web content and it may lead to arbitrary code execution also a malicious app that can bypass signature validation as a security feature and then there's one here that a local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges too and a successful exploitation of the most severe of these vulnerabilities could allow for the arbitrary code execution in the context of a logged in user depending on the privileges associated with the user the attack could then install programs view change and delete data and this is the same type of vulnerability that we talked talked about the impact of it for 13.5.2. For, so we're looking at a pretty high level of security update here. And normally Apple releases these security updates alongside the full release of a Sonoma coming up on Tuesday. But Apple deemed this so important to release it today on this Thursday ahead of the Sonoma release, you can tell that it's pretty important. So this is definitely something you want to keep an eye on. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench benchmark scores for this 13.6 update. On 13.5.2, we had a 23.63 in a single and an 85.95 in the multi-core. And after installing the update, we got a 23.57 and an 85.99. And you can check all these scores out on my Geekbench account that I take of all these machines when we do our testing. Now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs from 2017 and older. We're running 0.6.8, which is the latest version as of this recording. And our demonstration Mac is a 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro that is a metal GPU. And everything went good with the install. System settings installed the 11 gigabyte update. It restarted, came back up. We got a pop-up saying that we needed to install the post-root patches. We clicked that, it rebooted. Everything worked out really well. Now, if for some reason you install that update and that pop-up doesn't come up, that's okay. Just click on post install root patches and it'll say, oh yeah, you have updates to install. Just start the root patching process. And as you can see here though, all the applicable patches are already installed and of the date. And everything went A-OK -okay on this installation for our metal GPU. Now let's look at our 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro with a non-metal GPU. Everything went okay on this installation. We installed the update, we rebooted, came back, no issues whatsoever. Now keep in mind, I mentioned last update, there was a problem with these 2011 with the Bluetooth. And again, that looks to be addressed in the 0.6.9 update, which is still continuing to be worked on by the developers right now. And we might see that when Sonoma starts to come out after Tuesday, but again, there's no guarantee that there's going to be a public mainline release of OpenCore for Sonoma. So still hold off on that yet. It is still in beta mode for Sonoma, but everything is looking good for that installation. And hopefully 0.6.9 will fix the Bluetooth issue for the 2011 and older machines. But everything else is looking a-okay -okay for non-metal. 
Now let's talk a little bit about Sonoma. Sonoma is going to be released on Tuesday, September 26th. That's coming up really quick here. And it will be released at 12 noon Central Daylight Time, depending where you are. And you can bet I'll be covering the whole day of release here. So you can tune on to my Twitter and I'll be following with all the latest information along with an update article on the website. So it's stay tuned for that. It's gonna be really exciting when it comes out. And again, I'll keep you updated with all the latest information. Now comes that recommendation. Do I recommend installing the 13.6 update? Yes, I do, because again of the severity of the security update, and this goes along with the 13.5.2, and I know there's been a lot of security updates coming out, but again, it's good that Apple is addressing these immediately, especially with the severity of it. We don't wanna wait around. If it can be patched, let's patch it. It's really coming at a fast pace, but in this particular one, I do recommend installing it. So hope you enjoy this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.